Hello, welcome to part seven of the music theory course. In this final lesson, we will discuss a very useful harmonic strategy called modal interchange. Previously in music composition, if a composer wanted to create harmonic interest, this was done by adding non-diatonic chords through methods such as tonicization and modulation. These methods tend to utilize a lot of secondary dominant chords and tritone substitutions. In more contemporary music, there has been an approach that has allowed for very interesting harmonic motion without needing functional harmony such as secondary dominant chords. This method is called modal interchange. What modal interchange means is that when composing in a certain key, not only are all the diatonic chords available to you, but also the chords from every mode starting on the tonic. For example, in the key of C major, we know that D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B minor 7 flat 5 are all available to us. What would happen though if we were to borrow chords from the C natural minor or Aeolian scale? This would give us chords such as E flat major 7, A flat major 7, and B flat dominant 7. By utilizing both the C major and C minor chord families, we are able to expand our harmonic palette and create all sorts of interesting chord progressions. Here is an example. C major 9, F minor 9, A minor 9, F 13 sus, C major 9. The reason this chord progression is cohesive and pleasing to the ear is because we can sense that C is still the tonic even as we straddle between a major and minor tonal center. Let's analyze the chord progression further. C major 9 is of course the tonic or one chord in the key. F minor 9 is borrowed from the C natural minor scale. A minor 9 takes us back to the C major chord family as the sixth chord. F13 sus, which is essentially an F dominant chord with a suspended third, comes from the C Dorian chord family. So in this chord progression, we have chords borrowed from C major, C minor, and C Dorian. When you combine modal interchange with secondary dominant chords and tritone substitutions, the possibilities are endless for all the interesting harmonic movements you can create. Congratulations! You have completed Bass with Max's general theory course. You have learned more in this course than you would in a year or two of formal music school or university instruction. Music theory, though, is just the beginning. What you need to do now is use your newfound theory skills to analyze and make sense of all the music you transcribe and learn. Transcribing and learning music will be the path that will take you from being a beginner to being a truly proficient musician. In other playlists on this channel, I will go into detail as to how you should progress your musical skills. In the meantime, I recommend practicing applying the theory concepts from this course on your instrument. Familiarize yourself with all the key centers, all the diatonic chord progressions, all the scales, and all the modes. It may seem daunting at first, but if you spend a little time every day with these concepts, they will become familiar and eventually second nature. Enjoy your accomplishments, and in the meantime, happy practicing!